So value investors, including yourself, talk about the importance of uh, margin of safety in our investments. Um, but as Wilbur Ross puts it, distressed investors oftentimes find ourselves running into burning buildings. So in distressed situations where prices are falling, um, and you oftentimes feel like you're catching a falling knife, how do you get yourself comfortable about your investments, and how do you think about your margin of safety? Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. You know, th there's only one intelligent form of investing, and that's to figure out what something's worth and try to buy it for less. Uh, distressed debt investing is not different in that regard. We have to do the same thing. Um, and so, you know, simply put, uh, you know, I'll exaggerate the simplicity, but you, you look at a company, you look at the business, you figure out what it could make in a normal environment, and uh, you figure out what that company would be worth, generally thinking, uh, about to, uh, to a buyer, to a strategic buyer, once its problems are largely resolved and once the capitalization has been restructured. Uh, then you think about how that value will be divided up among the various <coughs> classes of claimants and you figure out what a piece of a claim is worth and you see if you can buy it for less. So, uh, and if you, if you, can, um, if you can make those judgments on the basis of conservative assumptions and still end up with good room for profit, then that's, that's a source of margin for error. I mean, I think, that the, I think that the margin for error comes primarily from, from being able to use conservative assumptions and then still be looking at a generous uh, rate of return, you know? Uh, now, it's, it's very, but before I stop, uh, I must say that it, it's not true that the, the more conservative, the better. Because you can get to the point where you can make assumptions that are so conservative that you'll never lose money, but it will give you a target buying price, which is so low that you'll never buy anything. So you have to, you know, you have to kind of gut it out and, and be willing to include some optimism or else you'll, you may never get to buy anything. Now, you, gave, you mentioned catching falling knives. And my vision is that when the, when the stuff hits the fan and, it's, and there's blood in the streets, most people go like this. And they say, well, we're not going to buy until the knife starts fall, stops falling until the dust settles, until all the uncertainty has been resolved. But the trouble is that once that happens, then the price will have rebounded. So we want to buy at a time of upset and while the knife is still falling. And I think, it's our, it's, I think that the refusal to catch a falling knife is a rationalization for inaction. It's our job to catch falling knives. That's how you get bargains. But you have to do it carefully. Thank you.